Good morning. You know the story well, but it's always fresh to read it. And uh, let me just read it to you again. Luke chapter 2. <clears throat> that night there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. And suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. And they were terrified. I would be too, wouldn't you? I mean, they didn't just sit around looking after sheep and look up, oh, an angel. They'd never seen an angel. They'd heard about them, perhaps. <clears throat> and suddenly the whole sky list just lights up. They were terrified. But the angel reassured them. Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news. That will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. And you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth, lying in a manger. That was a sign that they would find the Messiah. He, was, he, was, he looked like any other baby, except he's wrapped in death cloths, swaddling clothes, and he's laying in a cattle trough. Hardly a place for the king of kings to be. But what a sign. If you find that, you know you've got the right one. And so they went looking. Father in heaven, help us to find Jesus today in a special way. To see him for who he is. To trust him. To receive him. To believe in him. To worship him and to obey him. In Jesus' name, amen. Let me just take you to Bethlehem for a minute or two. And um, you drive into Bethlehem, and um, it's a busy place. Um, it's, uh, there's people just everywhere. And, um, and it wasn't, it's not really any different than on, on that first Christmas night. It was a very busy place. And there were shepherds out in a field looking after their sheep. One of the first things uh, I do with you is take you to this little cave. This, well, it's a large cave. It's a shepherd's cave. It, it's very different to what we would often think of shepherds being out in the field. They were probably in caves, and, and, and we'll look at that again a little bit later. You can see the black ceiling where, the, where for centuries shepherds have, have used this cave with their fires going and the black smoke up there. And uh, now they, in this particular one, they've got seats out, and you can go in and you can read this same story and be right on the location where, where perhaps it happened. This cave is just outside the little town of Bethlehem, the old city of Bethlehem. Uh, it's much larger today. In the next slide, we take you from there outside, and you can look over the fields. In the next slide, you see just from the other side, we're looking out over the fields, we're reading the story, we're, we're talking about it. And um, in the next slide, you... Um, this is the Church of the Nativity, just close to there, the oldest church in the world. And um, over the place, they say, where, where Jesus was born, more than likely, that's true. Uh, Constantine's mother, Helena, went back to the Holy Land in the 300s, and she asked the locals where things happened, and they built little chapels, which became larger churches over those places. And um, this is the doorway into the Church of the Nativity. You can see Jackie there. She's fairly short herself, but she's even bending down. Some people say that it was built that way so that you had to bow when you went into the church. Not really. They built that to uh, keep the uh, invaders from riding their horses in and out of the church and, um, and desecrating it. It's hard to get a horse through there. So that's why they built that, that small doorway. And uh, in the next slide, uh, you see this um, grumpy, stingy old shepherd. I took a picture of his flock, and now he's running after me. He wants some money. So I'm backing up as fast as he's running toward me. You can see his hand out there. Give me something. I did. But uh, I didn't want to. I didn't like his attitude at all. And uh, not all shepherds are nice people. And he was miserable. And let's move on, though. Here we are looking over the fields. This is the way they were back then. This is the way they are today. You can see some of the larger folds. See those, those stone walls? They would keep large flocks of sheep inside those folds. And, and somewhere, whether it be right in the... I took this from the mouth of a cave. 
uh, where they're in a cave or out there. One night the stars disappeared because the sky lit up in an amazing way and a host of angels gave the greatest news that the world has ever heard. But today I'd like to, first of all, just, just take a little different approach and say, who is Jesus? Well, <coughs> he was the shepherd. He was the shepherd. Turn with me, please, to John chapter 10. John chapter 10, verses 1 and 2. Jesus says, I tell you the truth. Anyone who sneaks over the wall of a sheepfold rather than going through the gate must surely be a thief and a robber. But the one who enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. If somebody comes in the door of your house, they're either the owner or a guest. If somebody breaks a window and crawls in through the window, they're probably not a guest. And it's not that they can't find the door. It's that they're a thief. And they're sneaking in a back way to take something. And so on the next slide, you'll see a, a typical fold of back then. You see the gatekeeper there. And uh, you see this wooden fold. And, and um, if anyone enters through the gate, the doorkeeper lets you in and out. You're obviously the owner, the shepherd of the sheep. Um, if somebody breaks a hole in that fold and climbs in at the back at night behind the shepherd or the gatekeeper and the purpose is to steal a sheep and so Jesus says if I if you enter through the gate you're the shepherd of the sheep and then he says here in verse 3 the gatekeeper opens the gate for him for the shepherd and the sheep recognize his voice and come to him he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out there, you see the gatekeeper would usually be positioned at the gate uh, it might be the shepherd himself on a small flock in larger folds. You may have five or six flocks in there at night. And, and when the shepherd would come in in the morning, he would call his, their names. They recognized his voice. That's how they separated the sheep. How would you separate four or five flocks that they don't all follow the same shepherd? Well, he calls out to them. Come, Blitzen. Come, Dasher, Dasher or whatever. That's, that's the wrong story. Sorry, I'm getting mixed up there. Calls his sheep by name. And, and what he's saying to them is, I am your shepherd. I know you by name. I know everything about you. I want to lead you. I want to guide you. Come and follow me. And the sheep hear that voice. They say, hey, that's, that's our shepherd. Other sheep don't recognize the voice, and so they stay where they are. But the sheep that recognize the voice follow that voice because that's their shepherd. And while the shepherd says to them, you are my sheep, they, in fact, are saying to the shepherd, you are my shepherd, and I will follow you. I will trust you wherever you go. And out the shepherd goes, and they follow him. Verse 4, after he has gathered his own flock, he walks ahead of them, and they follow him because they know his voice. They won't follow a stranger. They will run from him because they don't know his voice. <clears throat> The next slide, you'll see a shepherd. One day we were in Turkey and um, looked over to the left from the road and we could see this huge flock of sheep. Like there were several thousand sheep there, at, at least. And just one shepherd walking along the uh, a, a pathway. And, and so what we did was we drove off the road and went over to meet him and I got out of the car and I held my camera up to him to say, can I take a picture? And he nodded, okay. And uh, I didn't want to take pictures if they didn't, you know, if it would affect the sheep. I didn't want to see the sheep scattering everywhere because of this white guy standing there with this black thing in his hand. So he nodded and said I could do that. So I stood there and got this picture of him. And it was just so interesting. He walked, and the sheep all have their heads down, and they follow him. And every so often he calls out to them, sometimes in little clicking sounds, and they follow him. As I stood there, in the next picture you'll see, they just all kept walking by me. Uh, there were a couple of great big sheepdogs I had my eye on most of the time. I didn't want to be their lunch. But uh, here they are walking by me. And, and as I took pictures, sometimes they would start to go out from me a little bit. You know, they'd come to me and separate out and keep going out. Sheep just wander. They just follow their noses. 
and, and the shepherd would see them kind of moving out away from the path they were supposed to be on. In the next picture, you'll see how he turns around, and here I am in the middle of this flock, and, and he picks up this little flute and begins to play it. And they hear the flute, and, and they continue to follow. That's right. And, and he talks to them, and he plays the flute, and even though this stranger is, is standing there in their midst, and they're going around me and scattering a little bit, they in fact really pay no attention to me because they hear the shepherd's voice. And they're just following the shepherd. And Jesus has this imagery in mind as he, as he says here, you know, the sheep follow me and they walk, ahead, they walk ahead of, the shepherd walks ahead of them and they follow him because they know his voice. <clears throat> and then he says in verse 9, <clears throat> yes, I am the gate. Those who come in through me will be saved. They will come and go freely and will find good pastures. The thief's purpose is to steal and kill and destroy. My purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. The gate. There is one gate. And we need to come in through that gate. Jesus says, I'm the shepherd, but I'm also the gate. And you come in through that one gate... And you're in my fold. But there's only one gate. And you have to come through Jesus. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father in heaven but by me. It's another way of saying I am the one gate. He is the one gate to salvation. He is the one gate to eternal safety and security. And he says here that he is the one gate to a rich and satisfying life. Verse 11, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd sacrifices his life for the sheep. A hired hand will run when he sees a wolf coming. He will abandon the sheep because they don't belong to him and he isn't their shepherd. And so the wolf attacks them and scatters the flock. The hired hand runs away because he's working only for the money and doesn't really care about the sheep. A hired man works for money. Jesus works for love. The good shepherd works for love. The hired person works for money and them so that when danger comes, they're not going to stand up for these sheep. You're going to run. You want to protect your own life first. But Jesus says, I'm the good shepherd. I don't run. And when danger comes, I am willing to lay my life down for you. I say to the wolf, I say to the, the wolverine, I say to whatever, the hyena or that person, if you're going to get to the sheep, you're going to have to go through me. And he would lay down his life. In fact, Jesus did lay down his life for you. He was committed to loving you, even laying down his life for you. That's really the story of Christmas. It's really about a shepherd who came and said, I am the good shepherd and I will lay down my life on the cross so that you, my sheep, can find a rich and satisfying life today and so that you can have eternal life life forever but it's only because he laid his life down for us he is the good shepherd turn back with me to Luke chapter 2 Luke chapter 2 verse 8 that night there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby guarding their flocks of sheep where you have a shepherd you have sheep where you have a sheep you have a shepherd and the shepherd is not the sheep, and the sheep are not the shepherd. But when it comes to Jesus, he is both. He says, I am the good shepherd. But he was also the perfect lamb of God. There are many sheep around Bethlehem. And um, it's interesting that the sheep that were used in the Passover sacrifices and all the sacrifices in the temple in Jerusalem just two or three kilometers away from Bethlehem were born in Bethlehem on Passover for instance the high priest would walk down to Bethlehem choose a special unblemished lamb and take it back to the temple to be sacrificed as the Passover lamb and again you see this beautiful picture of Jesus the lamb of God also being born in Bethlehem <coughs> There was a tower there called Migdal Eder. We don't know where the tower was, but um, it was at Migdal Eder that the priests would, would, the shepherds would bring the lambs to the priests there and they would choose the perfect lambs. 
those that weren't perfect in some way would be sent back to the, uh, a certain field for uh, wool and lamb chops. Those that were perfect were put in another fold as unblemished lambs. There was something stamped on their backs and it said certified. There was the certified lamb. And so the people of Bethlehem knew all about certified lambs. Lambs that were specially chosen because of their perfection for the sacrifices up in Bethlehem or up in Jerusalem. This is a shepherd one day we just were dropping, we were just driving by and we saw these sheep all around this house and uh, so we, we stopped and uh, gave the kids some candy and uh, made some friends with the farmer here. And so he took us in and he showed, we said, are these your flock? And he went over and he chose this little lamb. I guess because this was his perfect lamb. And he brought it over and you can see Diane especially really taken with this lamb and uh, wanted to bring it home. But uh, this shepherd himself <clears throat> was, was so proud of this little lamb. It's like a certified lamb an unblemished lamb. The people of Bethlehem knew about this. And of course, Peter writes about it. In 1 Peter, uh, Peter writes, it was the precious blood of Christ, the sinless, spotless lamb of God. God chose him as your ransom long before the world began. Think of that. Long before creation, God chose his son as the perfect spotless lamb. But now in these last days, he has been revealed for your sake. That perfect lamb, Jesus, has been chosen for the sacrifice. And so that night there were shepherds staying in their fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. There are two types of folds, actually. This is the one kind of fold. It's uh, made of sticks and, and uh, tied. they're all tied around and and uh, it's a, basically just a wooden, very simple wooden type of fold. That's the kind you'd often find out in the fields themselves. But in and around Bethlehem, there was other types of folds. And in the next picture, you see a, a cave. And uh, this is a, a spot that not everybody knows about. But I'll take you there if you want to go sometime. We go over the edge of the hill, gently. And down underneath there, you'll see this amazing cave. Here it is. It's a shepherd's cave, an old one. These caves date back centuries, right back to before the first century. And what would happen is at night, the shepherds would bring their sheep into the cave. See, it was warmer in there. Didn't keep them always out on the fields, under the skies. It would get quite cold for the sheep and the shepherds. And the shepherds would sit at the mouth of where the openings were. They'd light a bonfire and there they'd stay warm. They'd wrap their shepherds' coats around them, stay by the fire, and nobody was allowed into the cave and no sheep were allowed out. And so they're all gathering around this. And um, it's that night that the angels appeared. And the next slide... You can see the steps even coming down. If we turn to the side, you'll see the steps coming down. As I I take this picture and look at it, I just imagine myself as a shepherd in this cave. And suddenly, there's this bright light at the entrance. You see that bright light? Let's pretend that's an angel. Let me read you the story again. That night, there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. And suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of God's glory surrounded them. And they were terrified. But the angel reassured them, Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David, and you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth, lying in a manger. And they went and they found him. Lying in a manger. What was the manger like? These are mangers. These were inside the caves. Some of them were natural. Some of them were carved out of the limestone. But in Bethlehem, those that had, were caravan workers would, would go underneath the city, the town, and, and that's where they would put their animals, their donkeys, their camels, any sheep, any cattle they had with them. And, and these little holes were mangers. They would stick food and straw inside there, right in the cave, and that's where the animals would eat. 
Joseph and Mary couldn't find a place above ground. Everything was filled. So the, the innkeeper said, go down into the underground parking lot where all the caravan workers and the, and, and the uh, animals are, probably belong to the innkeeper. He said, you can use that. I think he was kind of a kind man. He didn't just send them on their way. He says, go down and use a manger down there. And so they went down there and Jesus was born and they wrapped him in swaddling clothes and they laid him on the straw in one of these little mangers. And that is where the shepherds found him. From the throne of heaven to the manger of Bethlehem. It speaks of the the degree of humiliation to which Jesus was willing to subject himself for you and for me. And it goes beyond the manger to the cross, from the throne of heaven to the manger to the cross of Calvary, where he died as the perfect sacrifice for you and for me. Who was Jesus? He was the selfless shepherd who says, I lay down my life for you. He was the gate to the fold. He says, if you want to enter my fold, you need to come through the one gate through me. He was the perfect sacrifice, the perfect lamb, the unblemished lamb who was put on the altar of the cross for you and for me. An amazing Savior. An astonishing salvation that Jesus would do that for us. Our Heavenly Father, help us to understand a little more clearly today what it was like back then and just why you sent your Son Jesus into this world as a sacrifice, the perfect Lamb of God, as the one way, the gate to heaven, and as the shepherd, the good shepherd, who would lay down his life for his sheep. Touch our hearts, Lord, through the gospel message this morning, the message of Christmas. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand together.
Jesus, you are my King. Jesus, you are my King. Oh, come, let us adore you. Oh, come, let us adore you. go this week celebrating Jesus our King, the same your Savior come to earth to give us hope and life eternal. Go in His peace, celebrating Him this week. Amen.